All right, folks, and welcome again to the start of course number seven of 2023 for the Online Assessment Centre, the Police Online Assessment Centre. Uh, this is the assessment centre that you have to pass if you're applying for a Home Office force in England and Wales. So there's about 30, there's not about 35 of you, there are 35 of you this evening, so you're all very, very welcome. Some of you are on screen, that's amazing and fantastic. Some of you aren't for a variety of reasons, and that's amazing and fantastic as well. Uh, but you're all very, very welcome uh, this evening for this introductory webinar. What's going to happen in this webinar is I'm going to talk you through the reality of the online assessment centre, a little bit about the history of it, why have we got one, and what it really involves. Not the sort of 40-page document that you've been sent from the College of Policing, um, but the sort of reality, step-by-step -step reality of what each one of the exercises involves and how we're going to approach it and how we're going to approach each one of the exercises and how we are going to prepare for this Thursday. So it's Tuesday at the moment, in case you're watching this on the replay. Uh, in two days' time, uh, those of you who are members of the Online Assessment Centre course plus webinars option will be joining me where we're going to practice for the Stage 2 interview so that you can get over 90%. Now, I think in the invite I sent you, uh, there's something there about, in this webinar, you're gonna learn how to pass every one of the stages of the assessment with a score of over 90% uh, without, without having to refer to this thing, the competency and values framework from the College of Policing. Um, we'll do a bit of interaction uh, during this. And, and by the way, if anyone's got any questions, just raise your little electronic hand or just, wave at me. Uh, but bear in mind, I'm, I'm looking over two pages at the moment, so it's probably best if you just wave it, bring the electronic hand up, and I will uh, invite you in, unmute you, or ask you to unmute so that you can ask any questions. So if any time during this evening you've got any questions, please do let me know. Um, don't bank them all up to the end because you'll have probably forgotten by then. And if you're thinking, oh, I don't want to ask this question, I'm going to look really daft, uh, don't worry. It, I guarantee whatever question you've got, Someone's asked it before and someone's going to ask it again. So anyway, uh, let's just uh, check in with you all and get the hand signals working. How many of you have been reading this, the Competency and Values Framework for Policing, in preparation from your online assessment centre? So quite a few of you, not all of you, uh, quite a few of you though. All right. Uh, keep your hands up if you actually understand any of it. Uh, all the hands are going. <laughs> They're all disappearing. <laughs> How many of you? Who can answer me? Here you go. Who can explain to me this? The wheel of confusion. Anyone? Does anyone know what this actually means? Does anyone know why values are at one level and the competences are at three? Does anyone know why decision making is in the behaviours for the values of impartiality and transparency? And it's implied in the value of integrity. And it's also in the behaviour for analyse critically. Analyse critically has got three levels. And impartiality and transparency have got one level. But they all describe the same behaviour of decision making. Can anyone explain that to me? No, didn't think so. <laughs> Listen, I've been doing this now for 28 years. I've been supporting and helping people for promotion boards and specialist interviews for 28 years. I joined the police in 1985. I retired 10 years ago. Big chunk of my time in the middle of my career, I spent in training. I went on to become a trainer of trainers um, and uh, helped hundreds of people actually to succeed in specialist uh, interviews, promotion boards. Um, I helped hundreds of student officers to succeed in their probationary period. I got really interested in uh, personnel evaluation systems. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How? <laughs> How does anyone get interested in personnel evaluation systems? Well, I did. And I went back to university to do a master's in education where I focused on personnel evaluation systems. I joined some national steering groups, uh, one of them for what is now called Skills for Justice. Back then it was called the Police Skills and Standards Organization. I spent two years in a national steering group that was looking to develop a set of standards and behaviours for policing. This is not what we anticipated. <laughs> so th this is my world. I geek out on this stuff. Over the past 10 years, I've helped over 15,000 people join the police service. Uh, so if you go into any police station and say, does anyone know Brendan from Blue Light? 
I can pretty much guarantee there'll be several hands going up because people do know who I am and they do know what blue light is because they've come they've come through the system and they come back to me as well. Amazingly, at the moment, I've got one of my clients from 12 years ago, no, 11 years ago, sorry, 11 years ago, who's come back to me. They've been, been come back to me before, but they've come back to me now for their chief inspector to superintendent promotion board. How amazing is that? Now, that could be you. That could be you, but we've got to get through this online assessment center first. That's the last time I'm going to show you this, because what I'm going to talk about this evening is how you can succeed in the process without having to look at this and without being confused by the wheel of confusion or mesmerized by what the hell, <laughs> what, what does all of this mean? I mean, if I don't get to, if I can't explain it with my background, then you've got no chance. So let's take this and put it in the bin. You don't need it. I absolutely promise you, you don't need it. You can get 90 plus percent without having to refer to the competency and values framework. I absolutely promise you. I actually guarantee it. For those of you who are my clients, I do guarantee it. Because if you don't pass, if you don't pass and you've done the work I've asked you to do, you just get a refund. So I do guarantee it. You know when people say, I guarantee it. Well, I actually really do guarantee it. All right, let's just let Daniel in, Danielle in the room. All right, so first of all, has anyone got any big questions? Any big questions that anyone has about the online assessment center before we start? Anything at all? No? All right, awesome, awesome. So what is the Online Assessment Centre? Well, the history behind it is uh, it all starts with COVID. So prior to COVID, if you wanted to join the police, you had to go to a one-day assessment centre. Actually, it wasn't quite one day. It was like five or six hours. It was called the Search Assessment Centre. And it had been running for about a decade. And it's where you did some really pointless exercises. Uh, one of them was pretending to be a customer services officer at a shopping centre, uh, where you had to do role plays. And the role players had about 15 lines, and they were told to deliver them without any emotion whatsoever. So you had five, five minute role plays to manage uh, with people who were just like robots, actually. Um, but what that meant, it was you, you could put together like a, a system, a process to pass it. And it's the same with what was following it. So the College of Policing with the Met Police started designing something called the day one. And why did they call it the day one? Because it's the first day that you do any interaction with them, day one. Because some of you might be applying to the Met thinking, why do they call a week long assessment center day one? Well, that's why, because their new assessment center was called day one. Interestingly, actually, let's see if any of you can guess you should be able to work out the simplistic world of the police. Um, when you come back, when you came back after that for your fitness and medical, what do you think they called that bit? Anyone? Yeah, Umar's just said two. Yeah, day two. Day so two. If, any you, if any of you are thinking, why is the next bit called day two when it comes several weeks after a whole week assessment that was called day one? That's why. But in any case, um, the day one was similar sort of thing five or six hours where you do role plays written exercises bit of an interview it was an improvement on the search assessment center um, but it still had some issues it had some teething problems and then along came covid and all of that just got kicked into the long grass because we couldn't run things like that it'd be like a covid carousel and so as a result of that there was pressure on the college of policing to come up with an alternative because the thing is, police forces couldn't turn the tap off on recruitment. They had this massive, massive uplift to manage, the 20,000 uplift, um, the additional officers. I say additional, in inverted commas, because, of course, the Conservative Party, I think, lost about 21, 22,000 police officers over a 10-year period, and then decided we're going to add 10, 20, sorry, 20,000 on top of those ones that we've already got, which brings us up to, I think, about a net loss of about 2,000. So anyway, we've just finished Uplift. We've just finished Uplift, uh, which means that huge boom has finished. But they had to come up with something because they couldn't stop recruiting. And so they came up with the Online Assessment Centre, um, which involves no human contact whatsoever. Uh, just I'll just put that out there now. There is zero human contact in the online assessment center. It is exactly what it says on the side of the tin. It is all online, 
all remote, no contact with a human. You can't even reach out to a human. If you've got a problem or you're not sure about something, there's a help desk, but you're not going to get an answer there and then. There's no one at the other end of the little green light on your laptop or whatever it might be. Now, um, they use a platform that a lot of graduate entry schemes use uh, to screen people out of a process. Um, graduate entry schemes use a lot of online assessments, uh, very similar to this in many ways, uh, but they use it as a screening system before you actually go for a sort of two day or three day assessment center. College of Policing just used it as the final thing, the final thing. I thought it could have been a little bit more ambitious. I thought there would have been some human contact, but there wasn't. Because they could have done it via Zoom, they could have done interviews via Zoom, just as lots of forces decided we're going to do the final interviews via Zoom or via Teams. Uh, so they didn't. So what they put together was um, stage one, which is a situational judgment test, and then stage two, which was a competency based interview. I, I use the phrase interview. An interview means two people are talking to each other. It's not really an interview because someone on the screen, a pre-recorded video is going to ask you a question and you're going to give and get given five minutes to answer that question. So it's not really an interview. It's a competency based presentation of you answering a question. That's the stage two. And then from there, it moves on to the stage three. There's two parts to the stage three, a stage three written and a stage three briefing. Why they didn't just call it stage three, the written exercise? and stage four, the briefing exercise, I don't know. Sometimes I've asked that question. I, I just don't know. I have no idea. Now, some of you might be a bit confused thinking, I've not been told to do a stage one situational judgment test. And some of you might be a bit confused thinking, why am I starting the online assessment centre? And it's starting with stage two. Well, it's starting with stage two because last year, the College of Policing introduced a replacement for the application form. You used to have to do an application form. You used to have to type answers to questions in, and that would get screened out. But I think it was a bit of a cost-saving thing. They decided, let's get rid of that, and let's replace it with something called the National SIFT. Now, the National SIFT is a situational judgment test and behavioural styles uh, questionnaire. Sorry, I slowed down there because I'm trying to let someone in. Like I said before, I find it hard to do two things at once. Anyway, so <laughs> back, back to the webinar. Um, so where was I? Yeah, the, the National SIFT was introduced, which is comprised of a situational judgment test and behavioural styles questionnaire. That replaces the application form, um, makes even more of it online with less human contact, which I find bizarre, but it doesn't really matter whether I find it bizarre or not. It is what it is. So for that reason, a lot of forces decided because they had the, they could decide whether they wanted to do the stage one situational judgment test or not. They decided to pull that part out. So if any of you are thinking, why do I go in at stage two? That's why you've already done the national SIFT, which replaces kind of the situational judgment test because it's already got a situational judgment test built into it. So you move into the interview. Are you all with me so far? Give me a hands up or an electronic hand just to let me know. You, yeah, you're all with me so far. Awesome stuff. Great. Alrighty. Yeah. Um, and why do I say 90% as well? Why do I say, look, this is how you're going to get 90% plus? And if any of you are thinking, oh, that just sounds like some sales, sales uh, spiel, um, just check the Trustpilot reviews. Just go to Trustpilot and Blue Light Consultancy, and you'll see why we look at 90% plus. Uh, the reviews are just awesome. And thank you to all of you in the future <laughs> who are going to give me awesome Trustpilot reviews. Thank you very much. And thank you to all of you who've given me Trustpilot reviews in the past. If you read them, you'll see that they are screaming 90% plus. It's easy to get. Well, no, it's not easy to get. You've got to do the hard work. And I'll show, I'll show you the way, but you've got to do the hard work. You can get 90% plus. So many of my clients get 90% plus. That's what we're aiming for. I sometimes get people asking me what the pass mark is. I, I don't care. I'm not interested in the pass mark, and nor should you be interested in the pass mark. Because if you're aiming for a, just a pass, you're aiming for mediocrity. How many of you are aiming for a pass? Just a pass. I mean, just a pass. Uh, you, got, you got what I said then, didn't you? How many of you are aiming for a pass? Yeah, I'm aiming for a pass. How many of you are aiming for just a pass? Nah. Go on, give me a hands up if you're aiming for 90% plus. Give me hands up. That's the way. That's what we want. That's the attitude. 
Why do we need to have that attitude? Well, because we're seeing a repetition now of what I saw 10 years ago when austerity first kicked in. We've had three years of boom for recruitment with some forces making it so streamlined that you could even get in without an interview, without any form of human contact whatsoever. Metropolitan Police, no interview. Avon and Somerset, no interview. Wiltshire Police, no interview. West Midlands Police, no interview. Thames Valley Police, no interview. As one of my clients said last year, the hardest question I asked to join West Midlands Police as a police constable was, what's your inside leg measurement? That was the only human contact apart from uh, the fitness test I had. It was uniform fitting, and I wasn't quite sure what my inside leg measurement was, so they had to measure it. So it was a totally, so it was a tough question because I didn't know the answer to it. Quite frankly, that's ridiculous. Isn't it? It's bonkers. Now, just about all forces have been told now by the College of Policing, coincidentally at the end of Upleft, uh, so they can meet their targets, um, that they've got to introduce final interviews. But that's the subject of another thing. What's going to happen now and what is happening now is some forces are closing the doors on recruitment. Um, so I'll give you an example. Lancashire have already said that they've got enough in their pipeline to see them all the way through to 2024. They don't need to open up the recruitment window at the moment. Uh, Derbyshire Police have told successful candidates, people who've got through their online assessment centre and their final interview, that they're not going to start employment checks or vetting yet. They're not going to start that until 2024. And the reason why they're not going to start it until 2024 is because the next intakes for the people who are passing everything now are in July, sorry, uh, spring and summer of 2024. There's no point in doing the employment checks and vetting now because they just have to do it all again in a year's time. So we're seeing some forces doing that. We're seeing other forces forming merit pools or talent pools. One force recently wrote to my client, one of my clients to say that uh, you are one of the 150 that's been taken out of the merit pool to go for final interview. So it's a big force. It is a big force. Um, but they've already set up a merit pool. And the way to get out of it is to have a high score. I saw this happen years ago. So many forces would pass people at the assessment centre and they just put them in a merit pool, a talent pool. The only way out to get to final interview was to have a high score. And what a lot of people did is they, they passed, realised they were going to be stuck in a talent pool forever. Surrey police had some people in their talent pool for like three years during austerity. They didn't even recruit. No one joined in that three-year period. And eventually after three years, they wrote to everyone to tell them, sorry, but there's no places. <laughs> That's the end of the road. So I'm not sure if we're going to see that again. Uh, but what we are already seeing is a formation of talent pools. And what people did is they came to me as a client then to say, can you help me get a really high score? Yes, I can. That's what I do. And they would go back to their force with a higher score that apply to any force in the country, just so they could do an assessment centre, get a score in the 60s or 70s or the 80s, and then go back into the talent pool and get plucked straight out to go for final interview. Does that make, actually, you might be thinking it makes no sense, but it's just logical. And by case law, that is the only way they can um, decide who goes through to the next stage. Cheshire Constabulary several years ago tried to say that everyone passes and everyone's score is equal. Therefore, what we can do is we can choose people who are black and women and gay and transgender over people who aren't those protected characteristics. And they got taken to court for it. And uh, the, what the court said was, you've got to use the scores. You can't just say that it's a pass and every pass is equal because it's not anyway and without going into the detail of a case of case law that's why we need to get 90 percent plus that's why we're aiming for the highest score possible to ensure that we don't stick get stuck in a talent pool inside a merit pool um because i don't know i don't want that for my clients i do not want you to have that disappointment of passing everything and then being told that your score is not high enough to proceed cheshire constabulary don't even bother with a talent pool they just tell you you, well done, you passed everything, but your scores weren't high enough. So thanks very much, goodbye. Um, they do that now, actually. They've been doing that over the past couple of years. So even with Uplift, Cheshire could afford to do that. So give me a hands up, give me a proper big hands up. Are we all after 90% plus? 
give me your hands up if you were. That's what that is the attitude. That's what we've got to do. You've got to commit at this point to doing one thing every day that's going to take you closer to your goal. One practical thing every day that's going to take you closer to your goal. Right. So continuing stage two interview. What is that all about? Um, for those of you who are actually on the course, you can go to the worksheet section and you can print off my sample interview questions. Now, the reason why you don't need to have the competency and values framework next to you to confuse you, which it will, I promise you it will, is because I've already come up with sample questions and the supplementary points which you need to cover. These supplementary points link in with the behaviours in the competency or the value. So we know which values and competencies you're going to get assessed against. They are integrity, public service, transparency. We take ownership and we are innovative and open-minded. Now, don't think for one moment that the question is going to be, can you tell me about a time when you've demonstrated integrity? Can you tell me about a time when you've demonstrated public service? Can you tell me about a time when you've been transparent? No, it doesn't work like that. It works on the behaviours. They formulate the question based on the behaviours which are described underneath the title of the competency or value. If you're getting a bit lost, don't worry, it doesn't matter. I, I get this stuff, so you don't have to get this stuff. You just have to follow my instructions, follow my guidance, and you'll get 90% plus. So I'm going to share with you here um, the question for the value of integrity, which is quite simply, can you please tell me about a time when you've demonstrated professionalism during a challenging or difficult uh, situation? Or it could be, can you tell me about a time when you've done the right thing even when a different option would have been easier. So those are sort of questions which I get you to prepare for. And then I want you to cover off these supplementary points. So what was the situation? Uh, what did you do to remain professional or do the right thing? How did you demonstrate you were acting professionally or doing the right thing? Why was it important to act in a professional way? How did others involved react? What was difficult or challenging for you? And how did you manage that difficulty or challenge? So if you can cover off all of those points and structure your answer using the structure that I advocate, and it's not star. Um, star, I think, is a bit too simplistic. And besides which, how many of you actually talk like this? So the task I set myself, how many of you on a daily basis talk like that? Yeah, didn't think so. Even in the police, people don't talk like that. They just get looked at by their fellow officers who will just look at them and go, why is he talking weird? Why is she behaving in that weird way? <laughs> Even in the police, they, don't, they, they just don't say things like that. So I came up with a completely different structure. It's one I've been developing over the past 28 years, really. Uh, and it works. It absolutely nails it. And you'll be introduced to that on the course. It tells you each constituent part and how, it, how we break it down so that it gives you five minutes worth of things to talk about. Um, on Thursday evening, when we come together to practice, I guarantee that you are going to demonstrate uh, one or more of these three things. These three things are the things that consistently get made as mistakes when you're delivering interview answers. And the first one is structure. You're going to go all over the place. Some of you are going to go all over the place and you're going to meander around and you're going to have no structure whatsoever to your answer. It'd be like you're telling one of your friends at a pub about something that's happened during the day, which is not how you structure your interview answer. Um, so lack of structure is the first one. Uh, the second one is a lack of detail, a lack of detail. So uh, honesty time, folks, hands up for those of you who've been preparing. Hands up if you have been using phrases as you've been developing your answers, such as I approached the person calmly and professionally. Uh, I spoke to them in a way that demonstrated understanding. I, uh, I sat and listened to them with empathy and understanding. Um, I managed the situation um, efficiently and effectively. How many of you have been using phrases like that? Go on, honesty time. Uh, some shaky. So how many of you have actually started practicing? Whoa, just like hardly any of you. Come on, it's not good enough. You've got your assessment center coming up really, really soon. You need to be practicing, practicing, practicing. I guarantee that on Thursday, just about all of you will demonstrate when we practice a lack of detail and you'll use phrases like that. And that's the what, but the what is not the behavior. 
but the how is the behavior. What we're going to be focusing on on Thursday is how you did those things. So how you listen to someone empathetically, how you approach someone calmly and professionally. It's the how that's important because that demonstrates behaviorism. So that's the second thing that people get wrong. And the third thing is you're going to answer a question, but it'll be the answer to a different question. It'll be the answer to a question you wanted to get asked, not the question you were actually asked. So those are the common, common things uh, that happen, folks. Uh, those are the three things that we're going to work on. We're going to work on structure to make sure you've got an outstanding structure, one that gives you sufficient steps for you to be able to fill the five minutes that you've got. Because when they ask the question, you've got one minute to think about your answer and make notes. And then you've got five minutes where you're being recorded, where you've got to deliver your answer. There's no pause button. You can't press pause. You've got five minutes, you've got to nail it in those five minutes. And that's why we need a structure which has constituent parts within it. And if you're thinking, what does it mean by that? I'll give you an example. So when you're describing the initial situation, you'd start off by saying, in my role as a, whatever that might be, at an organization called, which is an organization which does describe the organization and what it does, an incident or situation occurred where, and then you describe the specific incident. Now, the next part of that within the situation chapter is you describing the impact of that problem, you describing the impact of that problem if nothing were done to address it. So you can describe that impact from several different directions. This is how we build up an outstanding answer by using detail, detail, detail. And then we go into the aim, where you also look at the options. We look at the action phase, which is what you did and how you did it, the important part, how you did it. We look at the learning and saying things like, I learned the power of open questions. I learned that it's good to talk and work in conjunction with others. They're all statements of fact. We're going to focus on some learning which is specific to this incident. Because in the result part, we're going to use the 80-20 rule. We're going to talk about how 80% of it went well, 20% of it didn't. Because the thing is in your answers, if you're delivering something which was challenging or difficult, it didn't work perfectly. I guarantee it, it just didn't work perfectly. That's not the way the world works. This is especially applicable at your final interview. You try and make out that everything you touch turns to gold, and I'm going to think you're either lying to me, or you're telling me about something that just wasn't challenging or difficult. Now, there's no one to check in with you at your online assessment center, but it's a really good technique where we talk about this is what went really well, but this thing here, this part of what I did, I think goes plan. So on reflection, and then you talk about how you reflected on it, and then you apply some really awesome learning, what you do specifically to change what you do next time. So that's the sort of thing we focus on, folks. Um, and that's why we call it the SAL model. Situation, action, sorry, aim, action, result, and learning. If you've got a little bit of time, you could add on the KU, which is knowledge and understanding. This is where you contextualize it to the policing world. Now, you don't have to do that for the stage two online assessment center, but it doesn't half put the icing on the cake when you go to your final interview. So it's good to get into the habit of doing it. Anyway, I explain all of that in far more depth on the online course. So after those five questions that you deliver, this is all going to happen in the space of about 30 minutes. Excuse me, I'm just going to turn the heating off. There we go. It's not that cold at the moment. Um, so it's going, to, it's going to take place over about 30 minutes, this, because you've got the question being delivered, one minute to consider it and make notes, and then you're straight into your five minutes, straight into your five-minute answer. You've got five questions, so that's 29 minutes, plus a little faff around at the beginning and at the end, you're looking at about 30, 35 minutes worth of exercise. That's the stage two. And that's what we're going to practice on Thursday evening. So any questions, folks, and I know there will be, so please do ask. Uh, last time I did this, everyone was really quiet. No one wanted to ask any questions whatsoever. Um, please do ask questions. So based on what I've discussed so far, what questions do you have about stage two? Oh, sorry, I'm just uh, unmuting myself. I'll, I'll, I'll mute myself in just a second. 
Um, so regarding the uh, stage two, so that is the, um, that's when you record your answer on the, on the webcam. Yeah. Um, and then um, they ask you, tell me about a time when X, X Y, and Z happened, right? Yeah. Um, so what one qu one question I, um, I I have is, so I understand that um, answering questions as a special, um, having been a special, um, depending on the, on the the answer, isn't always gonna isn't always gonna um, gonna count count towards you. But so so for me, I'm I'm a special. I've been one. I've been in the Met for um, for about nine months now, and um, as a student officer um, in Hendon, um, this. Um, this uh, other student officer, uh, basically um, during an officer safety um, uh, rehearsal drill, we had to um, um, rehearse our handcuffing techniques. Um, made made made, made um, a, um, an inappropriate remark that was mocking uh, George Floyd's death. Um, if anyone rem knows about the George Floyd um, yeah. death, um, so um, so that's so. I think if there's a challenging inappropriate behavior, I, I, I did challenge him and then myself and and a bunch of other um, special colleagues uh, that that then reported him to the the sergeant in charge of all all of us, and he was then uh, he was kicked off of off of the course. And um, as far as I know, he's he's left the Met so far. That might be the sort of thing you can utilise, but you, you've got to think, is this going to last five minutes? Is it going to demonstrate sufficient behaviours for me to articulate this over five minutes? Now, the, the I think one of the problems with um, being in a special constabulary, thank you, came over for your question, by the way, because it's a bit crackly. Your line is really, really crackly. Um, sorry. No. It's okay. No, I, I just muted you. Sorry. <laughs> just, it's, it's a bit crackly, the line. So actually, it's a good, really good question that Jacob has asked. It, it's, you know, when you're using examples from the police, uh, fire service, uh, working in the force control room, uh, the military, they tend to be in the moment. They tend to be things that just happen in the moment. And because of that, and the fact that it just lasts, whatever it was that you did lasts about 30 seconds or a minute or whatever it might be, it doesn't give you the opportunity to describe your behaviors in any kind of depth. And it doesn't give you the opportunity to demonstrate how you've interacted with other people. Because I'm not gonna pick it up off the floor, but, but I, you know, I do look at the competency and values framework so that I can put together structures and processes for you to follow that will hit the behaviors that they're looking for. That's how we do it. That's why you don't need the CVF. Is because I've done that heavy lifting for you. And, and trust me, you know, I've, I've been doing this for decades. I've got the academic qualifications behind me. I've got vocational qualifications, all the MBQ assessor, quality assurer qualifications. I've got the practical experience. I used to design exercises for national police training, which was a precursor to the College of Policing. Um, I used to design um, the assessment instruments and the marking guides and things like that. So I, I know what I'm doing. So what you need to do is to try and choose something that's a little bit more long term, something that's happening, that's playing out over a longer period of time. And there's less tea and medals. Um, I'm coming to you in a moment, Beth, because Beth has got a question. But I'll give you an example from the past. It was from someone who was in the paratroop regiment. It gave this answer about making a difficult decision. Um, in some interview practice I did on a webinar, and it was it just sounded awesome. He was doing some close protection work, taking some VIPs from one place to another in some war-torn hellhole part of the world. I can't remember it was now, but the, and then they came under fire from um, the enemy, and there was like explosions and all sorts of stuff. And he gave instructions that got all of the VIPs and all of his men back to base safely. It sounded like something from a Mission Impossible film or James Bond or something like that. It did. It sounded absolutely amazing. And the question I asked him, though, was where was the difficult decision? He said, well, I had to make decisions uh, about what we needed to do to protect everyone and save everyone's life. Yeah, brilliant. You know, 
tea and medals when you I bet when you got back it was all tea and medals all around and pats on the back and great job and you saved my life and I'll remember you forever and yeah yeah he said it was yeah brilliant yeah but where was the difficult decision you just followed protocol didn't you I said yeah I did I just followed protocol so there wasn't actually a difficult decision in there was there not really no it happened such so quickly he just went into this is the procedure so he didn't use that. This was for his final interview preparation. He didn't use that. He was asked a question some about the time when he made a difficult decision. Um, and the, the difficult decision he articulated was how, as a corporal, he was told by his sergeant and his lieutenant to get rid of someone because they're a lousy soldier. And um, he thought about it and thought, actually, yeah, they're, they're not a great soldier, but... There's something, there's something there that's causing that. And so we dug a little bit deeper and found out that this individual was dyslexic, but had never been identified as being dyslexic and um, made the difficult decision to challenge the sergeant about the sergeant's sort of, you will get rid of him, order almost. And he talked about the process he went through to make that difficult decision and the, the consultation he did and the what he looked up and all the different options he considered. And the feedback he got from the interviewers was that we're very surprised that you gave an answer like that. We thought considering your experience, you would have given us some answer about, I don't know, tea and medals. Um, and he said, no, I wanted to give an answer that involved people, that involved difficult decisions involving people. And they said, uh, great. That was a super answer, really, really good. And it demonstrated everything that we're looking for. At the end of the interview, they told him he'd got the job. They said, you'll get official notification in a couple of days' time, but we're going to share with you, you've, you've got the position. We'll put you out of your pain, you've got the position. If he'd used the tea and medals one, they would have sat there and thought, what a brave person, give him a medal, brilliant job, but I can't identify any of the behaviours that I'm looking for in what he's been telling me about. So that's a word of caution I'm going to give you all, folks. It's that sometimes the more mundane things, and you'll see how this plays out on Thursday. When we all practice on Thursday, you'll see how this plays out. It's often the most mundane things that demonstrate the behaviours. Not, not if you're a special, your latest, greatest arrest of someone who's been wanted for five years. That's on back, tea and medals. Not that you did some first aid and saved someone's life. Great, wonderful, amazing but it's not demonstrating the behaviours that they're looking for. Does that make sense, folks? Give me, give me a hands up if that makes sense. Or, or a wobbling hand if it doesn't. Yeah, great. I even got a... Like that. Brilliant. Um, awesome. Uh, Bethan, you had a question. Oh, yeah, it was only a quick one. What did you say the SAL standard for again? Situational, situation, action, aim. And what was the, what was the R? Uh, result. Result, was it? Yeah. And then learning last, yeah? Yeah. If you, uh, and it's broken down into little subsections. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm deliberately not going to break them down into little subsections because those of you who are on my course would be thinking, <laughs> I paid good money for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's broken down into little subsections. If you follow those subsections, you'll nail it. You'll nail it. Thanks. All right. Um, that sounded a bit mercenary, didn't it? But it, it is the case, you know. It's, there's a ton of stuff on that online course, which is just absolute gold dust for you. Um, all righty. Right. Any other questions about stage two? Right, here's your task. For those of you who are joining me on Thursday evening, for the stage two uh, practice webinar, this is where what's going to happen is you are going to select one, just one of the questions which I've given you, the top one is the one that I think is most likely as a question that you're going to get. And you're going to formulate an answer which you need to be prepared to give on Thursday. And on Thursday, what will happen is I will time you for five minutes whilst you deliver that answer. Yes, you will be watched by everyone else. Get over it. Yes, you will, Amanar, get over it. Yes, you will go, oh, is that my accent when you replay it? Yeah, get over it. I'm not interested, nor is the assessor. They're just interested in the content. They're interested in ticking the boxes. 
if you're thinking this is a time for me to demonstrate my motivation and enthusiasm, no, it's not. If you're thinking this is a time for me to demonstrate my inner values and how they're aligned with the service, no. This is a time for you to tick the boxes. This is the most formulaic tick box assessment instrument I've ever come across. Tick the boxes. Now, it means we speak to the truth. You know, we always speak to the truth. You don't start anything off in your policing career based on a lie or, or even over-egging the pudding. We speak to the truth in our answer, but we structure it in such a way that enables the assessor to be able to tick the boxes. And so that's what we're going to look at on Thursday evening. I'm going to debrief it with you and extract the learning so that both you can improve next time and everyone else can learn vicariously from your experience. So that's what we're going to do. Less me talking, more you talking on Thursday. That's the way it's going to roll. And it's going to be ace. It's going to be awesome, honest. And you're going to make some brilliant mistakes. And I say they're brilliant mistakes because the place to make the mistakes is here with me, not at your online assessment centre not at your online assessment centre. So any questions about your task for Thursday? Um, Danny's got a question. Go on, Danny. Oh, she's disappeared. Oh, no, there she is. Yeah, she moved around. Um, so this is probably cheeky for you, but if we haven't got a lot of time, I've noticed on your other videos that everyone's obviously learning it, putting it under the five minutes and everything. Can it be read <laughs> if we haven't got time to learn it yet? For Thursday. Can it be hang on, no, so can by me again? Run it by me again, Danny. So that question again. Can we do our five minutes but read it if we haven't learned it our answer properly? Can we read it off a bit of paper on Thursday? Ah, right. Okay. I prefer that you didn't, but if you if you're at the start of the process and you want to give it a go, then by all means. What what we do on Thursday, Danny, and I hope you're looking forward to it, is we, we do whatever it takes to help you improve so that you can tick all the boxes and score over 90%. Actually, score 100%. There's more than several of my clients have come back to me to say they actually scored 100% in the stage two interview. So I'm not saying that that's what you've got to get, but, you know, it's doable. So if you're at that point and you've just got it written out and you don't, you can't remember it all, that's fine. But you will discover by doing that, you will not sound as um, enigmatic as you would if you weren't reading it. And the reason why that's important is because do you know what most assessors are doing when they're assessing you? Do you know what they're doing, most of them? They're doing this. <sighs> because they've been doing it now for two and a half, oh, three years actually now. They've been doing it for three years and they're bored, bored out their brains. It's been the same questions for three years. They've not changed them. So you can imagine doing this for five days a week, eight hours a day, listening to you lot drone on about how you, I don't know, save someone's life. No, you're not going to do that because you're on my course. Uh, you're going to talk about something that's fairly mundane that demonstrates the behaviours. They're not even looking at you. Do you know, they don't even know what force you're applying to. Because it's waiting for you to say certain things so they can tick the boxes. So a little bit of enthusiasm and a little bit of something in your voice to wake them up. I'm not talking about getting all crazy and really mad with my hands. And, you know, really, really getting... Powerful action behind everything I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about a little bit of enthusiasm, a little bit of something that's just going to get them a little bit more interested than this. Half falling asleep at 10 o'clock at night because you're the last one there assessing. So, yes, it's fine, Danny. And yes, I've gone off at another tangent, but hopefully that answers your question. And uh, just go for it. Go for it on Thursday night, volunteer and say, look, me first, me first. Actually, you've just you've just done that, Danny. Well done. You're first on Thursday. <laughs> so, oh God, we should not say anything. Uh, brilliant stuff. All right. Any other questions, folks? Um, and for those of you who aren't on camera, you know, just you pipe up if you want. You just go uh, audio if you want. Um, for what for whatever reason you do not want to be on camera because we've still got. Oh my goodness! This 
uh, something like 39 people here. Wow, it's brilliant. Any no other questions? Okay, right, stage three. Stage three. Um, oh, right, there's one question that people often ask me. I'm going to answer it now for you, because some of you might have been thinking it, but you didn't want to ask it. Can I use notes that I've made before during that one minute to prepare? And can I look at my notes? The College of Policing Guidance says that you should not use notes that you've made before. But you can make notes during that one minute of preparation phase. I am a bit weird. When I make notes, I make notes on something that looks like this. Whereas most people make notes on something that looks like this. Now, if you're listening to this on podcast at some point in the future, the first page I showed everyone was a page where I've got notes on it, notes that I've made up before from something else, because I, I like to make sure that I use every bit of paper. Paper is a precious commodity. The second piece of paper was a blank sheet of paper. You can make notes in that one minute preparation phase. What you choose to make notes on is totally up to you. Right? What you choose to make notes on is totally, totally up to you. That's all I'll say on that. Other than all that can be seen by the assessor is in there. Because I've got my notes here. Look, there they are. Can anyone see them? Would anyone like to stand up and look down just to see if they can? No, not, no one fell for it, did they? <laughs> Doesn't work like that, does it? <laughs> Even the College of Policing don't have that technology. I don't think anyone does. I think it exists on Blade Runner. If anyone's ever seen the original Blade Runner from the 80s, anyone? No one's going to admit to it, are they? Um, it's of my era. Awesome film. They had that technology in that film. Okay. Um, where am I up to? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's a question people often ask, and hopefully it's answered it for you. Stage three written. This is where things get interesting. The College of Policing in their guidance says that you do not have to have any knowledge of policing. You don't have to have any knowledge of policing in order to do this assessment centre. The written exercise, wait for it, is you in the role of a constable, just arrived in a certain housing estate where there's a block of flats and housing and all sorts of other stuff, and it's just gone to rats. Everyone in the community has no faith in the police. Everything is damaged or broken. None of the gates uh, can lock. The CCTV is all broken. All the locks to the blocks of flats are broken. There's criminal damage everywhere. There's a lack of faith in the police. There's a sort of resentment of young people and their feral behaviour. It's an estate that, quite frankly, as a neighbourhood inspector, if I was in charge of it, I'd get my coat because it would just be an indication that I failed the community completely and utterly. That's a scenario you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to write about how you're going to resolve that problem and how you are going to improve confidence in the police and council over a two-hour written exercise. You'll be presented with some letters of complaint, some newspaper articles, some data, and you've got to write about how you're going to address that. That's why I don't understand them saying you don't need any knowledge of policing. It's a bit weird. Um, especially as for fast track to inspector, once you're actually in the police, if you want to go fast track from PC to inspector, the assessment centre there to create a level playing field is not based on any kind of police context whatsoever. You're given a role as a manager of a big shopping centre or of a hospital or of an NHS trust or something like that to create a level playing field. For this, though, to get into the police, despite the fact that say you don't need any knowledge of policing, they're expecting quite a high level of knowledge of policing. And to make it even worse, they're going to give you a scenario in that written exercise 
where a vulnerable person who has a disability is subject of what I would deem a hate crime, actually two hate crimes, two criminal damage, one where a, a rock is thrown through his window whilst he's in the room. And if that rock had hit him on the head, that could be a manslaughter stroke murder investigation and, a, uh, and graffiti on the side of his wall. How do I know this? Well, look, I, I scour the internet. I scour the chat rooms. I scour everything to do with police recruitment. I've worked for police forces who have asked me to help their candidates succeed in the online assessment center and in the search assessment center and then the day one. So I've got lots of contacts within the police and ethically I've found out a lot of stuff and I found out through scouring all the chat rooms and all the stuff that gets said, this is the incident you're going to deal with. I don't think it's fair on you because that requires quite a high level of policing uh, capability. Um, dealing with a hate crime like that, there's a lot to it. And there's a lot to building up confidence in a community that has lost all confidence in the police because basically they're not doing a very good job. So fortunately, I spent eight years as a neighborhood inspector and fortunately, I did a lot of groundbreaking work with the Home Office and Department for Communities and Local Government. And fortunately, after the, uh, my last year of service, I specialised at headquarters in problem solving and community engagement. Fortunately for you, I went on from there to be involved in the EU project, working mostly with Central and Eastern European countries um, and on their international advisory board for three years to look how we could improve their problem solving and community engagement capability. And if any of you are thinking, was that amazing? Yes, it was. I got to travel around Europe and meet some incredible people. And I work with police forces and councils on this. I've spoken at conferences about this. So this absolutely plays into my strengths. So one of the things that we're going to cover next Tuesday on the written exercise is my sample written exercise. When you look at my sample written exercise, and we're gonna utilize that as a basis for forming a template for how you can deal with the written exercise when you actually get it at your online assessment center and you will nail it. So if you, again, it's about following the systems and processes that I advocate, and they're not Brendan's made up systems and processes, they're things like the, the five building blocks of a criminal investigation, the problem analysis triangle, the eight stage intensive engagement problem solving process, um, the asset-based approach versus a deficit-based approach. And it all sounds very, very complicated. It's not, it all makes perfect sense. You just layer each technique on top of each other equals 90% plus. Um, actually, here's the thing. Who would like a freebie? <laughs> I know you all love freebies, don't you? Who would like a freebie? Who would like my sample, some sample exercises for the written the briefing and the interview. Go on, give me a big hands up if that's what you like. All right, awesome. All right, let me see if I can find it. I'll put it in the chat room. Um, let me just dig it out. There is, is file, my computer. Um, bum, 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 bum. Um, police officer, no, it's not that one. I might add that one anyway. Uh, there it is. So I'm going to, I've just put that in the chat function. It's called newsletter ebook. And it's got a ton of stuff in there about the uh, National SIFT, some sample exercises for National SIFT, some sample interview questions for the um, online assessment center. It's got um, part of the written exercise. It's got some sample stuff for the briefing, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. And it's also got some sample final interview questions in there as well. So there's an absolute ton of stuff in there uh, that can help you. Um, I'm also going to give you something else as well. Or do you want something else? Would you like something else on top of that? Yeah. Who would like uh, an ebook on how to answer the question, which you're going to get at your final interview? For most forces ask this question. Okay. Um, who would like a 
ebook on how to answer the question, why do you want to be a police officer? Give me hands up if that's what you'd like. Uh, not as enthusiastic, but still some level of enthusiasm. All right, come on, I'm not hearing it. Come on, who would like, big, big hands up, who would like a copy of that ebook on why, why do you want to be a police officer? How to answer that question awesomely. All right, okay, we've got it, we've got it. That's more like it. Brendan, they're not coming up in the chat, the things that you're posting, I don't think, they haven't come up in mine. Um, oh, should have. I don't Did anyone else get it? Did, uh, give me a hands up if you got it. No, in the chat function. Uh, let me just do that again. Um, open. I've got the first one. Yeah, newsletter ebook. It might just be taking some time to load. I've just posted it again. Now everyone's saying yes. Some people are saying yes. Some people are saying no. I don't know what's going on there. That might be. It might be because you are. Ah, it's a PDF. So if you're doing this on your phone, phones won't load a PDF. Uh, I think iPhones won't download a PDF or something like that. I'm on my phone. Can you put it on the? Can you put it on the Facebook link? No. <laughs> no, I can't. It's, it's just for. It's just for you tonight. That's all it is. It's just for you tonight. I know, I'm teasing you, aren't I? Um, actually, do you know what you can do? Is if you're on Facebook, message me after. Okay. Um, message me after, and I will send you... Um, someone's saying I'm on my Mac and I can't see it. I've just... How many of you have seen have seen it? I've just put it in the chat function. No? It's going on there. Wow. Brendan, I'm on my, uh, I'm on oh, my iPad. On on no, oh, hang on, hang on. Right, this is <laughs> this is Brendan being rubbish at IT. So for whatever reason, I was going to reply to Giacomo earlier about something. And so Giacomo is the only one who's going, I've got a copy, I've got a copy, because it says to Giacomo, direct message. Okay, let's just change that to all. Send chat to... Everyone in meeting. My right. bad. I must have accidentally. Um, I thought I was messaging everyone. My mistake. Yeah, you me you messaged me, so automatically my chat function <laughs> just went. Anyway, for, <laughs> it and Brendan doesn't go. Um, I'm quite. I was quite proud of myself that I was actually attaching a file to something. Uh, pride before a fall. Hey, so let's try this. I want to see loads of yeses and hands that go up because you all should be seeing the newsletter. All right, uh, excellent. That's more like it. Oh, boy. Don't let me anywhere near a computer. I was a good police officer. I'm awesome at helping people get in the police. I can help people succeed in promotion boards all the way up to superintendent. I can't attach a flipping file to a chat function on Zoom. <sighs> You should also have the ebook. Why do you want to be a police officer? Uh, who's got that? Has that one gone through? Has that one gone through? Give me a thumbs up if you got that one as well. Yeah, got them both. Thank you. Awesome. Thumbs up. Brilliant. Excellent. Yay. Great stuff. I'm also being a massive tease here. It only gives you little bits of it. If if you're liking the sound of all of this and you're reading those ebooks, thinking I want to be part of that, then you know. Please, I'd love to work with you. Come and join. I know some, more than several of you are coming to join the webinars anyone on Thursday, but come and join the group. Come and join us. You'll have an awesome time, I promise you, and you will be pushed and stretched. Uh, I'll show you the way, but you've got to do the hard work. There's no magic bullet here, folks. You've got to do the hard work, but what I'm able to do is show you the way, give you a step-by-step -step approach that's going to enable you to nail it, absolutely nail it. I mean, you've got to have something about you. You've got to have done something in your life. If you've spent all your life sat on your backside, playing on an Xbox till three in the morning, going to bed, getting up at three in the afternoon and doing the whole thing again, well, forget it. It doesn't matter how good I am. You're just not going to get in the police. But if you've got something about you, I can help show you the way. Um, so come and join, you know, come and join us. I'm going to put a, a shameless plug link, if I can find it, to uh, the actual course itself in the chat function. Um, and the thing is, you know, if it's not for you within 24 hours, let me know and I'll refund it. I'll refund your fee. And if, if it is for you, 
if it is for you and you do all the work and you um hang on a minute what's going on there uh, if it is for you oh gosh what's happening now windows keep popping up if it is for you and you do all the work and you um fail then let me know and i'll give you a refund there we go so i've just put the link in to the actual course and if you're watching this on the replay and you're thinking where the hell's the link um ask in the comments below and i'll send you the link and if you ask really nicely i'll send you the sample um, exercises as well to give you a bit of a flavor for what we do and how we do it um all right great stuff just uh, just a yeah. quick question um so the, the question that you're um, hoping for us to answer um in two days on in two days from now this thursday yeah. um, it, um i can't seem to find, find that question is that would you be able to email that to me no it's in the online course you come in it, it's in the online course it's under uh, the stage two interview part section and it's a worksheet. So you just, it's a PDF. So it's in the online course. You just go to that, click on it and it'll bring it up. It'll bring up this. Okay, then so that sounds good. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right. Awesome. Um, so, right. Okay. Let's push on. The next part is equally as ridiculous. Oh, by the way, oh, there's a great thing about the written exercise. Um, let's just mute everyone again. Uh, some of you are muted and it's causing some whistling noises and stuff. Um, there's a great a great thing about the, brief, uh, the written exercise. There's no camera on you. There is no camera on you, which is awesome, really. Uh, why is that awesome? Well, it's awesome because there's no camera on you. <laughs> just, um, you... You might, if you, if you, I mean, it, it looks organized around me at the moment, doesn't it? If I put the camera down onto my desk, it looked like a paper explosion. Now, if your desk is like mine, you've got bits of paper lying around it all the time. If you just happen to have bits of paper lying around it on, for example, how to problem solve in the community and build up confidence in the community, then you know, who knew? Who knew? Um, so, 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 so. Um, that's why the written exercise is awesome. There's no camera on you. You could do it in your pajamas if you wanted to. You could do it naked if you wanted to. So there'd be a story for your children if you if you ever have children or you've got children. They say, so mummy, daddy, how did you get to join the police? Well, I had to do this assessment center and the written part of it, I did it naked. <laughs> Actually, no, don't, no, don't. Because you'll just have your kids going, ew, 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 ew you naked. Ah. <laughs> anyway, that's how ridiculous it is. Um, that's how ridiculous it is. Uh, sorry, someone's just asking a quick question. Aaron, can I just ask, reading through your document, it says each, each, each answer should be about 200 words. How do you make that last five minutes? All right. I speak super fast naturally, and speaking slowly is very unnatural. No, you've got to speak slowly so they can understand you. For the CBI, yeah. No, get that, Aaron. Um, no, it's 200, years, 200 words per segment. So the situation part, approximately 200 words. The aim and options, approximately 200 words. It, it varies a little bit, but... Five minutes is about a thousand words. Okay, so five minutes of talking is about a thousand words, uh, 800 to a thousand words. So that's what you're aiming for. And if you're thinking, gosh, that's a lot of words. Well, you want to join the police, don't you? You know, do the hard work. I'll show you the way you do the hard work. Um, Aaron's saying, my answers need re reworking then. That's fine. Better you discover that your answers need reworking now than on the day of your assessment centre. Or three weeks, four weeks after your assessment centre where you get notification that you've failed. Then you've got to wait three months before you do it again. And that's only if your force is recruiting. Because what happens if your force closes its recruitment window and doesn't open for another year or doesn't open for another six months? Now, if you're applying for the Met, it's going to be open all the time. Because they're desperate. But go to forces like Lincolnshire, Cheshire, Durham, Northumbria. They've got far more people applying then they have vacancies. Even during the uplift, it was one in eight. One in eight people would succeed nationally. It's going to go back to about one in 15 to one in 20. You know, you might look at the Facebook group of people saying, oh, it's easy, I got through first time, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, probably one of my clients. Um, it's one in eight over the past three years. Prior to that, depending on the force, it would be around one in 15. So it is competitive. It's always been competitive. When I joined in 1985, it was one in 40 got in in Cheshire. One in 40 applicants got into Cheshire. 
I had to go through a total of five days' worth of assessment. Bloody hard to get in. So it always has been, folks. Anyway, best find out that you've made a mistake now than on the day or when you get your result. All right, let's finish with the briefing. What does the briefing involve? This is where the world gets even more ridiculous. My goodness, this finally convinced me that whoever put together these assessment exercises for the stage three clearly has never had a warrant card in their pocket. There's certain clues in the written exercise that lead me to believe that the person who came up with the exercise has never had a warrant card in the pocket. The first one is giving you an incident to deal with that involves a vulnerable person with a disability who's had two hate crimes against them, one of them where there's a significant level of threat, harm and risk. That I would have a sergeant supervising because of the seriousness of the incident, that leads me to believe that whoever put it together has never had a warrant card in the pocket. And the other thing is the sort of questions they ask you demonstrate to me that they've got no comprehension of problem solving and community engagement. Problem solving and community engagement are intertwined. They're not separate things. You don't do problem solving and then do the community engagement. They, it doesn't work like that. It works like this. The process of problem solving alongside members of the community develops the confidence in the police service. So it's, it's like this, which leads me to believe that whoever put together the questions has never had a warrant card in their pocket. Because if they'd had a warrant card in their pocket, they wouldn't have asked the questions like they ask them. So in my written exercise, I ask the questions in a different way to enable you to answer it in a way that makes sense to you, because you will have a hard time trying to separate the two. You can't do it. Your answer will be really duplicitous and it'll just mess your head up. All right, so here comes the other bit that's gonna mess your head up. The last part is a briefing exercise. It's not a briefing. This is where they're gonna give you a scenario and they're gonna ask you a total of 12 questions a total of 12 questions on how you're going to deal with a scenario. Now, if you look in the chat function and dig out the sample exercises, there's a little bit of a flavor of it there. It's all about a noisy party. It's all about a noisy party. You're on patrol on a Friday night with a colleague, on a foot patrol, on a, hang on, on a foot patrol on a Friday night with a colleague. That, that doesn't happen. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. <laughs> That is not a thing, by the way. The world doesn't work like that. You are not on a foot patrol on a Friday night with a colleague. Anyway, in College of Policing world, you are. And you come across a noisy party with some young people in it who are drinking alcohol or they appear to be drinking alcohol. Um, and you've got to talk for a total of 36 minutes. They're so gonna ask you 12 questions, you know, one minute to think about your answer and three minutes to deliver your answer about a noisy party. Um, this is how I would deal with a noisy party. If I was out on patrol as a police officer and I was with a colleague on a, any evening, Friday evening, why as an inspector I would be out on a Friday evening on foot patrol, I don't know. But even if I was a constable out on foot patrol, I would see some young people, maybe a bunch of 16 year olds celebrating their GCSE results. Some of them have got some tinnies, looks like it looks like Skull, it looks like Carlsberg, it looks like a martini, it looks like a can of cider, whatever. I can see them through the window having a good time, having a few bevies. My response, I keep walking. I just keep walking. Why? Well, because what would I actually be dealing with? If you look at most police force websites, they even have a frequently asked questions section that says, do you deal with noisy parties? No, we don't. And you can drink alcohol in your house or in someone else's house from the age of eight on upwards. Eight upwards. I think it's fairly short it's eight, it might be nine, but no, fairly short it's eight. It's not against the law for an eight year old to drink alcohol. There might be some child neglect issues if they're drinking half a bottle of wine every night, aged eight years old, but there's no offense. 
Go on, honesty time. How many of you, aged 16, have had a few berries at a party at someone's house? Keep your hands up if the police knocked on the door to investigate what was going on. No. It's just not a thing, is it? It's just completely, completely ridiculous. The police have absolutely zero powers to deal with noise nuisance. Zero. They have no tools and powers whatsoever. It is exclusively the domain of environmental services within the council. I even looked it up the other day. Um, I looked it up the other day and um, I looked up York Council because I live in York. Uh, I looked up York Council to see what their response was. They actually have, this is amazing. This, I wish Manchester had had this years ago. They actually have two officers who go out on patrol on Friday and Saturday evenings monitoring and dealing with noise complaints. That's their job. That's what they do between nine o'clock and three o'clock in the morning. That's what they do. So if you ring up the police on a Friday evening to complain about a noisy party, you'll just get told, if it continues to be a, a persistent problem, ring the council. And we're not dealing with it. The reason why the police won't deal is with it is because they've got no powers whatsoever to deal with a noisy party. And they've got no powers whatsoever to deal with young people, 16 years old, 15 years old, 14 years old, 13 years old, drinking a few beers inside someone's house. And that's it. So whoever put this together with the expectation that you're going to call out, honestly, the way they, they create and develop this scenario, you're going to have to involve so many officers. You're going to have to tie up so many officers dealing with things that the police just do not deal with. In no reality, in any force, does the stuff that they advocate, that they ask you to deal with in this exercise actually really, really happen. Matthew's saying what happens if it escalates. Into what? Into what? <laughs> Escalates into what? Some young people who've had some babies. Some young person who's thrown his guts out because he's had too much to drink. What, when, when is that? When is that a policing incident? It just isn't. Uh, Nathan's saying, I've seen a lot of tweets from the Met regarding antisocial behaviour and to use their website to report it so I could reference this as to where uh, to direct the neighbours complaining. The neighbours are only complaining because you're there and you're going asking them. The incident. Um, go to the Met website. It says we don't deal with noisy parties. So anyway, the point being, it's bonkers. <laughs> Gia Kerman was asking where's summer. My little boy <laughs> winding up, winding up the doggy out there. Um, so it, it's a completely ridiculous scenario. Um, it, it, it just won't happen. So the way we deal with it, um, yeah, so Aaron, so when I spoke to some officers from TVP that suggested environmental services, but also said you could be looking at a breach of the peace. Um, no, it's not a breach of the peace. A noisy party is not a breach of the peace. It never has been, never will be, and no part of any legislation to do with common law could it be a breach of the peace? Zero. So I'd advocate that you steer clear of serving officers. Never would a noisy party be a breach of the peace. Never, ever. If you arrested someone for a breach of the peace at a noisy party, they'd get turned around really quickly by the custody officer. Um, so, yeah, right. The way we deal with it is we don't ask fellow officers or serving officers, how would you go about dealing with this? We have to put ourselves in College of Policing La La Land and that's how we're going to deal with this on Thursday evening, next Thursday evening. We're going to go through the written exercise. I'm going to get you to answer those three minute questions. And we are going to, sorry, I'm just going to mute you all. Whoever's unmuted themselves, I can hear you. Um, so we're going to go through those uh, exercises and we're going to put ourselves in College of Policing land. We're in College of Policing land the biggest strategic objective for the College of Policing Chief Constable is to stamp out the scourge of noisy parties. Yep. It's a major priority for the Policing College of Policing La La Land. Noisy parties are the scourge of our communities and we've got to do all we can to protect young people from the harm that can come from noisy parties. We're going to have to put a completely different head on for us to be able to deal with this stage three briefing uh, because clearly whoever put it together 
has never been in the police because they know that they've just set you a completely ridiculous exercise to deal with. So that's how we're going to deal with the briefing exercise, folks. That's how we're going to deal with it. Um, right, okay. So uh, let's just see any of the questions. No, 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 no. All right. Okay, any questions about the whole of everything that we've covered then? Anything at all? So uh, one question I have, so the, the um, with the um, written exercise, is that the thing on Rennington? Uh, so I've done this assessment before and I'm, just, I'm retaking it. Is that the Rennington Estate one? Yes. Oh, okay. I've done this one before. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same unless they change it. Unless they change it, um, which they might do because I know they're doing uh, a scoping exercise at the moment uh, where people have already done the assessment center and have passed it are being invited to do um, some sample exercises for what they're going to introduce to replace the exercises that are out there at the moment. But the thing is, if they change everything tomorrow, it doesn't matter because the systems and processes that I show you could apply to any kind of policing problem. The systems and processes I show you will enable you to answer any type of question if it's from those values and competencies. That's why I give you a backup answer. Just in case they change the questions, if they change the question at all, they change it to my backup question. Because there's only so many questions you can ask from each competency or value. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, Aaron's saying, can I just clarify what I need to do to prepare for Thursday the 20th? Yes, please. Uh, just prepare an answer to one of the questions. You pick which question. You pick which one. Prepare an answer to one of the questions, and then we will deliver that on Thursday evening. We'll practice it. So I've just got a little guest. You're letting the doggy in. Okay, thank you, Alec. Um, he was asking about Summer. Come on, Summer. Up you come. There she is. There's Summer. She's wet. What's Alexander been doing to you, hey? Has he been soaking you? There's Summer. Um, she's soaking wet. Summer, what have you been doing? What's Alec been doing to you? It's okay, baby girl. It's safe here. My little boy is 11. He's just chaos. He really is. He's, uh, he's chaos. He's a good boy, but he's chaotic. And he seems to give the dog a good soaking for some reason. Um, all right. Uh, where was I up to then? I can't remember. I, I, I got distracted. Where was I up to? I can't remember. Nope, the dog has just been let out now. Um, ah, the chaos of my house. Um, children and dogs. Uh, what, where were we? Oh, yes, I think that's answering Aaron's question, how to prepare for um, Thursday. Um, all right, so what else have I got? Let's just have a quick look in the chat room. Um, Nick saying, do you get, just get one scenario for the written briefing? Yes, it's one scenario, but there's several different angles to it. Um, I've got a direct message from you, Iram. Um, ah, okay. You're after the Met DC bolt-on training. Uh, just send me that. Oh, you just have to send. I'll send you another email about it. Yeah, send me the email um, this evening, and uh, I'll tell you exactly what you need to do to prepare for the bolt-on. All right. I think that's uh, all the questions answered. Um, okay. Uh, uh, oh, Beth, where's Bethan gone? There she is. Bethan's got a question. Go on, Bethan. Um, North Wales Police, they do a final interview, don't they? For North yes, Wales. they do. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for all of you, I would focus on the only force I'm aware of that doesn't do a final interview now is Avon and Somerset still, although they will be introducing one very soon. The Met Police who do two role plays for some reason. I don't know why they do two role plays instead of an interview, but uh, they, they've said they're going to introduce an interview at the end of the year. Um, and Wiltshire, although Wiltshire say on their website there's an interview, but it doesn't, they don't do well. So for every, every other force, there's a final interview. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had a date yet for the online assessment centre. I only put my application in about two weeks ago, so... Ah, we OK. Well, Bethan, the time to start preparing for the online assessment yeah. centre is now. Yeah, yeah, that's why I've done it. Because you could get... Um, are you joining us on Thursday? Are you joining us? 
Yeah, uh, brilliant. Um, and the reason being is, I know quite a few people might be told, oh, your date will be in six weeks' time, or it'll be in May, or something like that. Forces sometimes get given a batch of online assessment centre slots that are available at short notice, and they'll just send them out to you to say, actually, I know we said May, but uh, yours now starts next week in April. Okay. Uh, and that's the thing. So you need to be ready for that, all of you. You need to be ready for that. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. It is a thing. All right, let's just get muted. There's a lot of feedback there. So let's just get everyone muted again. Um, I think I've covered everything. I think I have. Um, any other questions? No? All right, awesome. Well, I know, oh, Danny's got a question. Go on, Danny. So just to clarify, the challenge in, like saying about the army and that before, the challenging situation, can that be challenging someone above you then? Because I've got a situation where I did that once. Can I use that for that answer? I challenged my MD. Or yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, out. <laughs> yeah, no, you can. But if it's just, um, I didn't like what they said, and I said, I don't think you should say things like that. And they went, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Well, it's a very short answer, isn't it? But if there's more to it, there then be a bit more to it. <laughs> yeah, if there's more to it, then brilliant. But if it's just a sort of, very simplistic i said i don't think you should say things like that and they said okay yeah you're right i'm sorry do you see how there's just nothing there is there? it's just there's not a five minute answer there yeah. so if there's more to it yeah fine but we'll, we'll practice it on thursday on thursday i can guarantee that for at least one or two of you i'll say that answer's not going to work um and you, but the place to discover that is thursday with me and the other thing to remember is it's not just about oh i've only got one session to go to you know, if you've got your online assessment centre ahead of you at some point in the future, you can attend as many sessions as you want going into the future. And also you've got the benefit of two years worth of recordings of webinars. Although I'd focus on the most recent ones um, because they're the most up to date. But you've got so much material to go at. You'd be sick of the sound of my voice. You know, you're doing enough work when you're sick of the sound of my voice. All right, now you'll be fine with that, Danny, but we'll check it out on Thursday. Uh, anything else, folks? Anything else? Um, sorry, I just have one yeah. question. Um, yeah, so, um, I applied, uh, well, I passed my like behavioural skills two weeks ago for the Met, um, yeah. and I haven't had, well, they said that they'll be in touch about the online assessment centre, um, but I haven't had, heard anything yet. Um, I've got my final uni exams in May. Is there a possibility that if that did clap, like what happens if, that assessment centre clashes with one of my exams. Then you've got a whole seven days to do all of this in. Oh, OK, perfect. So it's not just on one day. You've got seven days to do these three exercises in. So if you oh, try okay. to say, look, cool. I'm busy doing my exams, and just go, well, we're giving you a whole week. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Right. I thought it was just one day. All right, perfect. Thank um, you. But also, bear in mind, Lily, that what the Met do, and they're famous for this, is you could get an email tonight to say that your assessment centre week starts today. Ah. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, the Met uh, uh, devils for this. They've got a reputation for it, and I don't know why they can't organise themselves better. But yeah, because I was considering sending them because I thought two weeks is pushing it. I thought they might have said something by now. So that's, no, yeah, you, you no. could be waiting weeks, or you could be waiting an hour. Okay. I've I've had some clients uh, about six months ago, uh, actually during the webinar. During the webinar, when I was saying you're going to get very short notice from the Met, it was actually during the webinar, three of them piped up and said, I've just had the email now, and it says that my week started yesterday. So the week to do it in started yesterday. So, yeah, it's it's not best with the Met. I don't know what kind of circus they're running, but it's okay. not. Well, that's, not that's, that's good to know, so. Yeah. so crack on. Crack on as if your week starts tomorrow. Okay, um, anything else, folks, before we go? No? Awesome. Right, well, listen, thank you, all of you, for attending tonight. I hope you've got some value out of it. And like I said, if you're not coming on Thursday, please, you know, you really should. Honestly, you're going to get so much out of it. I absolutely promise you. Um, work with me. Can I just ask one more quick question, please? Oh, go on, hang on. Yeah, who's that? Diana. Yes, go on, Diana. <laughs> Hi, um, would you be circulating the recording for those of us that joined a little bit later? Um, I'm not sure yet, uh, probably. It'll, it will go inside the 
Right, where, where all the webinars go, the recordings of the webinars go, and they go, they go into a Facebook group, which is for online. For those of us that are not on Facebook. <laughs> if you're not on Facebook, um, you won't be able to. I know, to... I should get a life, I know, but. <laughs> well, no, it's not, you know, fake, who wants to be on Facebook, really? Um, but what a lot of people do is they create a Facebook account just so they can access the Facebook group. They, you create an account, call yourself day one. There you go, day one. That's cryptic, isn't it? Day one, it calls myself day one um, or day two or whatever. Or you missed the beginning of this, so you won't know what I'm talking about. But call yourself whatever you want. Call yourself whatever you want. Call yourself, um, I've just had it, actually, the, the first email that's just cro cropped up at the top says Lumigen. Call yourself Lumigen. I don't even know what Lumigen is. It's some spam email, but call yourself Lumigen. Put everything to private. Don't put a picture on there and just use the Facebook account to access the Facebook group. Now, all the recordings go in the Facebook group um, for the online Substance Centre Plus webinars. Uh, that's where everything is. That's where everything is stored. So that's where the recording will go. Um, I may put it on social media. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But th that's where it goes, Diana. Um, okay, thank you. That's, that's where all, all the rest of them. Right, time to go. Time to go. I shall look forward to seeing you soon. Please do. I'd love for you to come and work with me. Like I said, if if you purchase the service and within 24 hours you think this isn't for me, just let me know. I'll give you a refund. And if you do the work I ask you to do, and remember you've got to do the hard work, there's no magic bullet, and you still fail, I'll give you a refund. And it's a no brainer for me. I've given two refunds, two over the past year. And one of those people came back, repurchased the course and passed it again. So there's only one person really who's, we parted as friends, we didn't even fall out. It's just like, no, it didn't work out, did it? No, nah, I don't think I want to join the police. Great, shake hands, part as friends. Right, so I'll catch up with you on Thursday, folks. Look forward to it. We're gonna have a great evening. I'll see you then, bye-bye for now. And uh, thank you, thank you for all the thank yous. Bye-bye for now.